Welcome back to iostec. Today we are leveling up your web development skills with a deep dive into Axios with Angular. From basic get requests to advanced configurations, you will become an Axios expert by the end of this tutorial. Ready to send HTTP requests like pro? Let's get coding. Axios is not just about sending get requests, it's about mastering the full spectrum of HTTP operations with ease and precision. Before we begin, make sure you have Axios installed. So in order to install Axios, just run this command in your terminal. So type npm install Axios press enter okay now go to your component where you want to use the axis import the axis after importing the axis let's start by making a get request and handling responses and errors more effectively i'm going to create a function get posts and let's create a constructor as well that will call that function now let's add try cache block so this cache block would capture the errors if happens any now i will create a constant response is equal to await axis.get as axis uh, will return us the promise so i am using await to resolve that promise or to settle that promise if you are going to use await make sure to add async before your function and in the get function you just have to pass the url of your endpoint so here i am going to use the json placeholder so that is a very famous free json placeholder that you can find here you can use it for your practice as well it is very useful so once we get the response just console it like this response.data now let's test it really quick reload it you can see uh, it sends a request to this post endpoint and once we get the response it displays that response in the console so here notice the async keyword and await expression this pattern helps you write asynchronous code in a way that's cleaner and more readable next up let's post some data we will create a new post by sending json data to our placeholder api so for that i will create a function uh, async create post try and then we need catch okay and here now i will save the response in our response variable and await for axios.post function and here i will add the endpoint url json placeholder slash post so this will hit this endpoint with the post method we also need to give it some data so before sending in data let's quickly understand the structure that we need to send it so for example this is the post endpoint and this is the post for get method and this is for the post method and you can find the usage guide from here creating a resource you have to pass this structure of data in order to create a post i'm going to create a function button click so whenever a button is clicked it will create the post and we will pass the object that we want to be created as the post let me receive that data now we need to convert it into the string so i will use json.stringify okay uh, let me display the data in the u uh, in the html as well so for that i will create a property data empty array and in the html let's add something like ng4 let item of data so here uh, you have to type provide a type but for now i will just add any array now let's quickly test it we should see the data here but before that we have to set the data array when we receive the response here so here i will set this data is equal to response.data and now you can see all of the titles are being displayed of the posts now i will add a button by the way when the post is created i just want to display the success message post created and here you can concatenate some other useful information okay now let me add a button on the top just to test it okay open the inspect elements so that we could observe go to the network tab click on the test and you can see the post is created with the id 101 and you can see in the response as well uh, i don't think that will give us the post that is created because this is just a fake json api so maybe you did not insert the data in their database but uh, this is how a real api should work as well you just have to 
I pass the data in the post method and it will just create it and if you reload it it will display the latest data on the top so here json data is here data is the actually json object containing the new posts data and also always handle errors with try catch blocks to avoid unhandled promises like we did here now let's tap into the power of axis interceptors interceptors allows you to perform actions before a request is sent or before a response is returned to your code so here on the top let me add the interceptor dot request dot use and here i will pass a callback function and second callback function would be for the error so here we have to return that config as it is you may change something as well in that in the error section i will return a promise dot reject with the error that we got so you can add it here as well or you can move it in the constructor as well that would be the context of the angular so here you can add it next i need to add the axis dot interceptors dot response dot use and here i need to give it two callback functions one for response and one for the error again here i will reject and here i will simply return the response whatever i got this pattern is excellent for settling auth tokens, logging and centralizing error handling. So here you can, uh, this is a request here, you can include the headers as well if you want to. For example, config.headers, here you can add any kind of header, x, y, z, a, b, c, whatever, and give it a dummy value. And when a request would be sent, you will see this header in the HTTP request in the network. So let's give it a quick try and see if we see it. So go to the network and here we should see that this is basically response. We need to look into the request headers. Look at this X, Y, Z, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is going from here. So in this way, once you add interceptor once, then whenever you send a request by using the axis, it will uh, go through that interceptor. It will apply all of the logic that you have provided in your interceptor so i guess the best place uh, to add interceptor is the service you put the your axis in the service add interceptor in that service and then access the axis with the help of the service so that is, that is one of the methods that i that came in my mind that should be very helpful and useful and other benefit is that here in the response interceptor you can modify anything for example when you receive a response uh, this is how it will look like you can modify anything for example you can add a property for example this is an array you can modify it like r is equal to r dot map item any and here you can let me actually add any array here something is not right here okay so here i will make changes really r dot data is equal to r dot data dot map and here we will get the item and you will return the item as it is but before returning it will make some change like item dot name is equal to xyz save it and so here you will not notice it but it will in the angular context you will see that data so just to show you i will print the entire object like this by using the json pipe okay look at this here we have a name xyz name xyz so this is how we have modified modified the every object in this array axis also lets you create instances with custom configurations so this is useful when you have different base urls or headers so for example here on the top you can do this thing const api client is equal to axis dot create and here add the base url and for our case base url is this and you can pass uh, any headers if needed it's up to you so this is going to be the global header for you and if you need to pass some authorization token you can pass that as well like so once uh, that is done here you don't need to do this you can just replace that and keep it simple like this you don't have to repeat the base url every time now let's give it a quick try right now i can see an error here the reason is that we are directly using axis but we should use 
the API client every time. So here I will use API client here instead of Axios directly. Now you will see that it is hitting the API correctly without us needing to add the base URL. So with that API client, you can maintain different API configurations without repeating the code. Just call the API client.get or API client.post as needed. All right, you are now equipped to handle complex HTTP requests in Angular using Axios like a true expert. Remember, practice makes perfect. Experiment with these techniques and soon you will be handling API calls with confidence and ease. Subscribe to Ayastack for more in-depth tutorials and hit that bell icon so you never miss out. Drop a like if this tutorial was helpful and share your thoughts or future tutorial requests in the comments below. Keep crafting amazing code and I will see you in the next one.